Good afternoon. Good evening. I hope you're doing great. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the debate that is going on regarding artificial intelligence and uh, human translation and uh, which one will win eventually. I want to say in advance, well, I'm a translator, I'm an interpreter, and I don't think in the uh, near future we will see a demise for real human translators. Let's take the scenario. This Rocky Prime Minister, for example, wants to travel to the United States. Which one is more feasible and which one is more logical to take a tool like a radio-like tool to use it as a translator between the Iraqi Prime Minister and the um, American President? Honestly, of course, we default to human translators. Um, I think people are asking the wrong question, and this is not my words. They are the words of the Vice President of the International Federation of Translators, or translation, I, I don't recall the exact um, you know, title of that speaker, but you can go and check out his uh, video. He talks about that kind of matter, and this video is just a reflection about the, some of the speech that he spoke about in this matter, on this subject, within this context. Uh, real translators have their own pros and cons. Artificial translation has its own uh, cons and pros. So we should draw a dichotomy between them. And one of the things that we should draw a dichotomy on is not to ask which one is which, but to ask when. You can use artificial translation to translate text, to get a sense of the alternative versions that uh, you should default to and use. But sometimes certain occasions like official meetings and certain occasions call for real translators because they reflect on policies. They have deep informed knowledge about the kind of context where they, um, they speak. They're specialized within the terminology of the field that they're translating from and to. Um, no matter how much you train the artificial translation or artificial intelligence translators slash interpreters, there might be some glitches and hiccups and sometimes the translation gets really gimmicky to a point that is unacceptable. And to avoid this kind of dilemma, you know, a lot of people default to human translators because they can alternate. They can choose their words effectively. They understand the emotions. Um, and it's really, really, really uncomfortable to bring a machine and put it in between two official officials or people who represent the states. It doesn't make any sense, honestly. So the idea is that um, communication, humanity, the, the human communication is human, and it should be human. Um, artificial translation is really useful within the context of using text translation or utilizing the lack of or shortage of translators and interpreters. And as I said in some of the previous videos, when I say translator, I refer to interpreters as well, because the word gets used interchangeably, the word translators slash translation, um, especially within the Arabic context. Um, so the idea is, the debate is, is actually really controversial. Um, uh, artificial intelligence and translation, uh, and I'm sorry, I'm sweaty, because I cannot turn on the AC because... Um, I have some sinuses issues. Uh, the debate is, is not a chicken-egg debate. It's, uh, it's the debate that the artificial intelligence has not been cooked well and enough to be an equivalent or better or superior to the human translation. And the human is not qualified enough to be... Uh, at the same level of or repertoire of the artificial intelligence, because I mean, you cannot bring a human translator and ask them to, to translate, for example, 
30 plus languages where in, in case of uh, artificial intelligence and translation, you can do that. So there are cons and pros for each parties, but I highly question the fact that artificial translation will take over the presidency of uh, human translation. Human um, is human being is unreplaceable. No matter talking about biology, first of all, because they can they can listen, they can respond, they can cater for the emotions of both speakers back and forth. Uh, there are some coded language that the artificial intelligence cannot deduct um, from the context of translation. There are actually hundreds of things that are, you know, differentiating um, human translation from artificial translation. And to, to, to funnel it down to very simple context, I think the approximation of um, this subject should be taken from an academic point of view more than from a social point of view. Because we need to understand what artificial intelligence is. Um, are we talking about tools that are made in China that do simultaneous translation uh, or synchron synchronous translation or um, consecutive translation? These tools are assistive tools because they are technology. They are subject to, you know, a lot of the technological bugs. Uh, they can be hacked. Let's imagine a conference that uh, uh, the, uh, the machine translation is hacked by hackers or there is lack of Wi-Fi and the other counterpart um, doesn't have a, uh, an alternative human translator. There are things that might go awry. There are things that are gimmicky with artificial intelligence, but not to question that I am biased when I am saying this, and I'm bluntly and blatantly saying this, because I'm a translator, and the debate really bugs me and is irksome to me sometimes when I talk about it. Um, we cannot um, equate artificial intelligence to human um, translation. There are things that are different, so many things that are different. And just thinking about the list of differences, we can go ad nauseum about it. There are things that we should understand. First, the subjects that is translated to and from, uh, the context, the, uh, the, the circumstances of translation, the official translation, whether it's written or spoken, the kind of language, but the automation is subject to scrutiny by specialists. And so far, if, if we look at it from a decision point of view, I really doubt that um, a company or a conference will give the authorization or approval to artificial intelligence to take care of translating their conference, especially if it's a, a high stake stakeholder level of context where a fund is raised or um, the conference uh, brings together people from all walks of life or from all different organizations. But this is realistically the point that I wanted to convey through this short, bumpy road reflection on the differences between artificial intelligence and um, translation and social um, or human translation. Thank you very much. I'll leave the, uh, the video link in the uh, description box and you can check it out. Have a wonderful day.